Hey, I'm Brock with Brock Entertainment. And I'm Amanda with Amanda Reed Weddings. And this is the I Do IQ podcast, where each and every week we're going to be discussing the latest in wedding and event trends. And we're going to let you know all the things that you need to know in order to make your event the most special. Yeah, and in the end, you will have the best wedding and event experience ever. And something tells me we're going to have a little fun along the way. I don't know about that. I'm a pretty serious guy, yeah, Amanda. Kind of and this is a serious topic, so... <laughs> Only seriousness. Serious business. This is the I Do IQ podcast. Let's begin. Hey, I'm Brock. I'm Amanda. And this is the I Do IQ podcast. I am pumped about today, Amanda. Yeah, I know why you're pumped about Pumped today. because of this guy right here. <laughs> yes. I'll let you introduce him. This is our good friend, everyone's good friend, the bartender <laughs> extraordinaire, Mike Coon. He's Mike. Like the coolest Coon Saloon. Like the name is awesome. We want to talk about all that stuff in a minute too. But hi, hey. thanks for thanks for coming today. Absolutely. We're so love glad it. to have always so glad to have you. Always around. glad to see you at totally. any party yes. in life. Everywhere. <laughs> Yes. I mean, yeah. So let's kick it off. This is how we like to do things. Yeah. What are you obsessed with right now, Mike? Drinks. <laughs> <laughs> Besides that, like, are you into anything, like, in general? I have quality and freshness. <laughs> <laughs> quality and freshness? <laughs> What? Oh my gosh! All right, Amanda, show him how it's done. I guess so. My my current obsession is um, a company. Oh, there's a couple of companies that do this, but they're like roses that last a year long. Oh, I gave my mom this as a gift. I have seen those. Yeah. yeah. So I gave this to my mom for Christmas, and I keep checking in every time. So it's, the company that I bought from is called uh, Venus et Fleur, and you get this pretty little box of roses that last. A year or more. How long has she had hers? She's had it since Christmas, and so we're you know we're five months. Are and they, they still good? Fabulous. They smell amazing. Wow. They're beautiful. So, so I know I've I've read into this, but how do they keep them fresh for a year? I I can only imagine. I don't know. I'm sure there's all kinds of chemicals and stuff. But they've I don't, something they've done. I need to research it. But they've crossbred these flowers and they yeah. got it to where it's like this amazing. I don't know combination and. They wow. smell. They do. They smell amazing. They're still beautiful. There's not a built. They're not wilty. They're not in water. They're just in a little box. What? Like they're not in water or anything. Yeah, it's really cool. I got my mom flowers that last forever. It's plastic. That is not what this is. <laughs> plastic flowers. <laughs> These are legitimate no? roses. No, different, different. Ha, and price wise, were they a lot more expensive? Yes, they're very they're costly for sure. But if you were to think about how much would it cost to buy the same arrangement, yeah. you know. 12 times a year, I mean, flowers, I mean, they don't, yeah, maybe two times weeks. A year. Yeah, like they're not going to last. It, so, okay. Relative to that, was it more than $240? Well, I bought a small one, so you know. Okay. But an arrangement, like, and hers is like a, just a little, you know, what am I doing? What's that? <laughs> Six inches. It's okay. a small bouquet. All right. But you, I mean, a larger one, I mean, I've seen some that are in the thousands. Oh my gosh. Yeah. But think about that. I mean, if you're somebody who really loves roses, yeah. I mean, especially Kim Kardashian, I feel like that's something she's all about. Would probably. that be something good for a wedding? N no, I not think it would be cost prohibitive. I think it would okay. not be. But I think it would be a cool, like, I don't know, it might be a neat gift to give to the, you know, the yeah. special bride or something like that to kind of memorialize it. I think that yeah. would be neat. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm kind of obsessed with that though right now. Well, okay. Here's the question. Would it be good for a grave? You know, we just had Memorial Day, you know, not too long ago. I don't know. I think, I'm not, I'm thinking. Because you don't have to water them, but. No, but I feel like the rain, you know, being exposed to the elements yeah. might not be great either. Okay. And the way they're presented, they're these beautiful acrylic boxes and all. I don't know. I'm not sure that that would be a great. Mike, I like you should get thinking. your wife some. I like your thinking though. Year long roses. You think she'd appreciate that? I got her a. 24 karat gold dipped one like 25 years ago. Whoa, and it's still dipped geez. in gold. And it has not wilted. <laughs> <laughs> At <amazing>. all. <laughs> not even a little bit. All right. Oh, so my obsession is showing my seven-year-old daughter yes. 80s movies. <gasps> I'm doing the same thing. Yes. Yes. So we started with the Back to the Future series, Definitely. which I didn't realize had so much cussing. Yeah, they're dirtier than you realize. I yeah. don't think in the 80s they had PG-13. It went from G, PG, and R. Oh. So that was a PG movie, and now it would be PG-13. Yeah, okay. So that... Is she horrified by the language? or she? No, she just over? doesn't even pay okay. attention to it. Okay. She loved them. Yeah. And then the next one we watched was not an 80s movie, but it was a, a movie that I grew up with, Sandlot. Oh, gosh. She loved that. Yes. And then right after that, Goonies. Not a huge Goonies fan. She loved the Goonies. Okay. I she, don't love she it. She loved it. Who hey, like goes? And then <laughs> I showed her Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. How did that go Which she over? did like. She just didn't like the way that they talked. 
She like, doesn't like the valley talk. Party on, dude. She's yeah. like, why are they talking like that? That's funny. They sound so dumb. Well, of course, my seven-year-old daughter is very sophisticated. That so. she is. That she is. Yeah. That's funny. So we we did the same thing. We showed our kids um, Back to the Future. Uh-huh. And they kind of were like, what? What? But okay. Really? Okay. Yeah, they didn't love They liked it. We, we, bu- like, we busted them out. Boom, boom, boom. <sighs> well, All then, three of them yeah. like that. Yeah. I don't know. Three is not my favorite, so we've not even gone there. But okay. two, like two, I always loved, and I remember being like the hoverboard, yeah, and, all the yeah. cool stuff that's in that. And they didn't like it nearly as much because they were like, "Wait a minute, who's that guy? Well, that's Biff." But that's oh, Biff. What? They thought too much. I was like, "Quit thinking about it. Just enjoy it." It's a. It's I just feel sorry movie. for your kids. Yeah. You know, my brother just bought. Speaking of Back to the Future Two, he bought some new Nikes they that are self lacing. No, they're not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so cool. And they have a, a little dot on the side of them that you can change the color. So the color of your soul. That's like the old. He um, bought them for, and they were not cheap. I'm like, are you going to keep them? He's like, no, I bought them to resell, but they're self-lacing. They're super cool. That's pretty just cool. Just like though. the movie. That's pretty so, impressive. That's what I'm obsessed with I right mean, now. Wow. And we just got through Family Matters too. Oh. Or as well. So nine seasons of Family Matters. Where is that streaming? On Hulu. It is. Yeah. Okay. Did I do that? Uh, yeah, I think, I think mine might like that too. That's do your best impersonation of Urkel and go, Coon. Go on. <laughs> Did I do that? Did I do that? That's good. Maybe. Got any cheese? Yeah. <laughs> Did I do that? <laughs> yeah, I played Urkel when I was in third grade, I think. It does not surprise me in the least. Yeah, it was, I don't want to go into that story because then we'll get uh, Way side canceled. Oh. Uh, uh, oh. That's what I'll say. Okay. It was the 80s. A lot of things were okay in the 80s. I'll just, oh, I'll leave it at that. Okay. All right. Yes. Got so it. let's get into this. So before this ice melts, Mike, you on Coon Saloon, you brought... Some drinks to make for us today. Mm-hmm. But before you make them, I brought my own drink. We talked about this <laughs> as one of my favorite things so last scary. week. And this is a different brand that I haven't tried. This is Rams Point Peanut Butter Whiskey. So let's all try this together. This is the first time I've opened it. Do we want to put a thing of ice in it or just leave, drink it a little straight? you take straight? it neat? How do you take it? You know, you can drink it at room temp. Room temp? Yeah. Neat. All right. I'll just pour it a little bit so you oh, can just so taste scared. it. Just taste it. I've never tasted Ooh, this brand. It smells really Screwball good. Screwball is what I have tried, and that's excellent. It looks like syrup. Oh, but it this is a little thick. bit cheaper, so oh. we'll, we'll see if, if <laughs> I'm a there's little a scared. reason for that. All right. Cheers. I'll let you I'll let you guys try one at a time. Go for it. Oh, oh Go for okay. it. You can go first. Uh, look at her shoot that down. And? Doesn't taste like peanut butter to me. Okay, then this is not a good brand, then, if that's the case. It's, go ahead. Mm-hmm. Smells a little different than Screwball. Yeah. It's more on the butterscotch side. Yeah, butter. that's, that's what, what it, it smells like. Mm. Yeah, not as good as okay. as uh, Screwball. Yeah. But it was ten dollars less, so we are not worth. I got the... it as a gift <coughs> to Brian uh, from Go Rogue. Oh. So I'm to just him, basically him. telling him you're you're worth less than a bottle of Screwball. Well, there you go. Well, uh, that's that was, not bad. I mean, you can kind of taste the peanut butter a little bit, the aftertaste. But give it a shot, peanut butter whiskey. Now, what do you have? Yeah. I, I have. I think I'm wasted. <laughs> I'm three sheets to the wind already. So You're have I to made carry a this. fresh yes. uh, mint-infused <laughs> syrup before I left the house. Ooh. Oh, okay. Because like I said, I, I do obsess about freshness and quality. That's good. Um, and you make a lot of your own simple syrups and everything. You don't buy that typically right. for an event. Okay. Now, they don't last as long because there's no preservative in them. Okay. But they're fresh. So I make them right before an event. I know that I've controlled it from growth to now. And okay. also, it cost me 50 cents to make a jar of it where it's like 12 $16, yeah. okay. you know, to okay. buy a jar of it. So so it, it, one event, it will last the whole the whole event? Most of it because it's, okay. it's, it, I make it really concentrated and you only need a little uh-huh. anyway. Yeah. All so right. Hey, and you know what? Brian just popped in here. Brian, come here for a second. So we just tasted this peanut butter whiskey. If you want to jump on that side of the table so we can see you. Very excited about this. Uh, All right, he's pumped. Mm-hmm. I'm just going to give it. So He bought you the cheap one. Don't, <laughs> don't get too excited. I, there were two brands. One that I had, I'd never tried this one, so I didn't know. It's not bad, but try it. It smells good. And tell us what you think. If you don't like it, I'll keep this. I'll buy you the more expensive bottle. A little spicy. Yeah. It's different. Okay. This episode brought to you by Rams Point. Rams Point. Not if you're looking for cheap peanut butter whiskey, (laughs) Rams Point. 
All right. Yeah. Well, if, it's like syrup to me, though. It's like yeah. that's a really like. He doesn't love it. I don't love it. Okay, screwball. I'll buy. I'll okay. go back mm-hmm. after this episode. Buy some screwball. Bring that over because that legit is yeah. the best. Okay. I was just. This here for just any other I was oh, yeah, hoping. Just in case just anything in case. else would <laughs> spill into that. Call, you know? gotcha, Brian with gotcha. Go Rogue X right there. Okay. All right. So we're making what? Um, I thought, well, summer's basically here. I've been on pause since mid-March, so I'm still right. stuck in March. Uh-huh. But um, a good summer drink is a mojito. Okay. Wow. I love mojitos. Yes. Mojitos are my favorite, actually. Yeah. And it, that, that is the perfect summer drink. Do you get a lot of weddings that have this as a specialty drink in the summer? The, you know, rum is kind of like the black sheep of the five spirits. It's number five. It goes really? vodka, whiskey, gin, uh-huh. tequila, then rum. I love rum. And for some I do too. I just, I don't know why. That's Maybe one of my favorites. Region. So rum and, uh, you know, coconut rum and pineapple is probably one of my so favorites. Good. I know, I like it too. So when I was in college, our, my cheap drink was like, Captain Morgan and uh-huh. the pineapple Dr. Pepper from oh, Sonic. Yeah. It tastes it's like drinking sunscreen, but it's delicious. It's really it's very refreshing it's great. and light. Yeah. It's great. Yes. Notice I said college, not high school. <clears throat> uh grade school. <laughs> Back in grade school. My mom well. used to get us uh a Route 44 <laughs> cherry coke. Top it off. No. All right. That is pretty. That All is right, pretty. So as we as we toast our drinks here, I want to start. I want to hear about you. I want to hear about where this came from. How yes. you got into the business? Just where this? I mean, get your story here. So yeah. let's. Yeah. How long have you been uh, been doing this? Well, I really think back um, since I was about seven or eight. We would go with the parents to the keg parties in the eighties, and I got this idea one day, like, "Hey, Mister, I could go get you a beer from the keg for a quarter." Uh, <laughs> what? And. Uh, <laughs> Some people be like, oh, get me a drink, you little bastard. And then other people, like, here's a dollar. Keep them coming. I'll be like, yes, sir. And I'd get home with like seven, eight bucks. Oh, like, my gosh. I just made a killing. Yeah. How old are you? It's like seven or eight. That's awesome. Start bartending at seven and eight. That's, I mean. <gasps> yeah. That's so, when but it Coons took me was decades born. to land on that. I, uh-huh. I got out of high school, went in the Navy. Um, but I still, I had a just passion for doing events so i was the mwr rep which is morale welfare recreation i put on the quarterly picnics for our department I'd okay and i don't order all the food from the mess hall and pick out a park and for some reason always fell on my watch that we were off so uh-huh. <laughs> that whole shift <laughs> conveniently <loved> mm-hmm. <laughs> and then you got out of the navy and then what'd you do with life uh, so i came back and i went into retail because this is a very retail heavy area uh-huh um Started at Dillard's on the loading docks and then ended up moving to, I got recruited over to Lowe's okay. where I was a sales specialist because being a communicator, it's easy. It, it just flows. And after doing retail sales for 20 years, I've just, my wife's like, you never meet a stranger. I'm like, nah, I just like to pick up a conversation yeah. with anybody. Could be the booze. <laughs> that too. It's a, it's a good uh, lubricant <laughs> for social life. So are you a big drinker in general? Not really. You just like making drinks? Yeah. Okay, so at what point in life did you decide, you know what, I want to be a bartender. I want to start making cocktails and and serving drinks. It's been about 12 years now. Uh, I was working at Lowe's, and uh, a lot of the incentive programs were kind of going away. Mm -hmm. I was like, i I got to keep up. We have a new baby. we got to keep this money coming in. Yeah. And a friend of mine kept coming in with these big trays of food. I'm like, dude, what do you do? He goes, oh, my my aunt's a caterer. So I, I was like, dude, get me in on that. (laughs) <laughs> Needs to get some yeah free grub, mm-hmm. little side money. One day she goes, uh, "I need a bartender. Can you bartend?" I was like, "I can make it." Sure, I did that when I, I was seven. I know how to Google things <laughs> and I know how to watch YouTube videos. <laughs> so exactly. yes, half the battle. So I got into it, and then the next day she's like, "Okay, you're the head bartender." I was like, "Sweet." She yes, goes, it doesn't mean anything. It's just a title. Like, <laughs> okay. Doesn't matter. So then I started really obsessing over it, like uh-huh. looking up how to make a good drink, a uh, bar rescue. Is a a fun research tool. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> you okay. gotta make it the right way. You don't right. want to overserve, over pour, yep. Exactly. And so we started getting more and more refined with it. Um went from free pouring with all of my people that were just like, dude, I need something to measure this with. Like, <laughs> I've been doing it for years. What mm-hmm. are you talking about? And then you refined it. Yeah. And then when did you finally decide to open your own company? It was with a couple of my good 
catering chef friends were like, you keep buying all this equipment. Because, like, the caterer would leave and I'd be left behind. And I wouldn't have a water dispenser or a pitcher or cooler for the ice. So I'd just start, I'd pick one up here and there until I had a garage full. Mm -hmm. And they're like, you have all the equipment. Why don't you just start a company? And I was like, you really think so? They're like, no, I know so. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Really? And that's where Coon's Saloon was born. Yeah. Yeah. Set me up with the... um, person to get my LLC set up, set me with the CPA, like talk to this person. They know events. They know uh-huh. how to talk to this insurance agent. They know how to do event insurance. Because mm-hmm. I would call insurance companies and be like, I couldn't tell you a kid. Mm-hmm. Really? Mm-hmm. So you got set up with the right people. Yes. And I think that's that's big for anybody who is thinking about starting a, a, an events business. You got to get with the right people that know yes. your business. And, you know, insurance is big. Uh, the right CPA that yeah. knows, you know, what you can write off, what you can't, what you need to look for. Those are big in this industry. That's a constant battle, too. Yeah. I'll tell you that for sure. Mm-hmm. That's cool. Okay, so your name could not be more perfect, like the cute little rhyme and everything. How did you even dream that up? We sat around our little think tank in the garage. We would make drinks, and I'm like, I got, it's got to have something to do with my name. And people are like, I think it's too edgy. And I'm like, it's my name. It's true. And I was like, because the first time I saw I'm like, Coon. Coon Saloon. Yeah. What's this guy trying to pull? Right. I was and like, I've got to have a mascot that's already <laughs> coon. You know, I've got to. <gasps> yeah. And it's spelled a K. Right. It's true. <laughs> it's right. It's true. Uh, and so after drink five or six in the garage, you're like, Coon Saloon, let's just go that's with it. the Coon oh, Saloon. It was like the wandering coon. You know, it's, it's pictured this vagabond hobo raccoon <laughs> with a stick okay. and the rag on the end of it. You know, and it's my graphic design buddy's like, Coon Saloon. You're still like, no way. Yes. And, I love it. And how long has Coon Saloon been around? Uh, no. This is our fifth year. Is uh, it really? February it? 24th was the fifth anniversary. Wow. Uh, wow. December 2019 was actually our fifth anniversary for the LLC, but I got my first paying gig in February of okay. 2016. Yeah. <laughs> nice. And the sky has been the limit since then. You I've, guys are everywhere. Ever, ever since. I, Liz Wilhelm, we all know lighting and all that when mm-hmm. she worked at botanical gardens was like you keep getting busier and busier you, you know you're gonna have to quit Lowe's. you're gonna have to make a decision i was like no way well yeah <laughs> each year like another hundred percent or 200 percent growth from the year before until i finally everyone knows us everyone knows yeah. our mm-hmm. brand and mm-hmm. and that we try to bring just the top shelf of whatever we can in service right us. oh yeah that, you even uh, doing events with you if something runs out, nobody would ever know because right. you always have a backup. Always. You always come prepared. Uh, your guys are always there on time. If it's not you and girls, yeah, <clears throat> and I, girls, your people there you go. are there always you go. there. So <laughs> you dress the part, you look the part, and you serve some of the best drinks. Definitely. So service is big for Brock Entertainment. It's big for yes. uh, what company is that you're oh, part of? Oh, what are we called now? Amanda Reed Weddings. Amanda Reed Weddings. So. Um, that's, you know, that's, it's a big thing. Did you ever think that you would grow this big, that you would have to quit Lowe's? Was it ever a thought in your mind? I had what I thought was a five-year plan. It ended up being like an 18-month plan. Yeah. Uh, right. All of a sudden I was like. It grew so quickly. Boss, I can't ask you to, to keep giving me the weekend off. It's not fair to all these other people. Mm-hmm. You know, we've all worked with a lot of blood and sweat, literally. Yeah. <laughs> and tears. And what did your wife think once Oh, she was all for it because I could finally have a home life. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Because working a rotating schedule is worse, is worse than shift work because you, mm-hmm. one day you're 7 to 4, one day you're 10 to 7, one day you're all 1 to place. 10. Yep. Sometimes you get locked in to do overnights. Uh, sure. Yeah. I, I mean, I've had a lot of jobs yeah. while DJing as well, and it, it can be it can be tough. It's hard. It's very difficult. So... Thinking through the process of starting with a new client, I know how we typically work together, but how if you were to, someone were to call you tomorrow, mm-hmm. what's the process you're going to go through with helping someone make the right selections for their wedding or event relating to the bar? I have a list, like a standard list of qualifying questions. Okay. And the first thing out is, well, how many guests do you anticipate? Because mm-hmm. we know it's never going to be spot on. Right. Um, and next is, well, they're like, well, you know, how do you charge? And I'm like, well, it's basically labor-based yeah it's a package but we try to be as value conscious as possible so next is what do you want to serve is it beer wine beer wine cocktails you want cocktails just for cocktail hour do you want cocktails to last all night that's part of our factor into how to order 
Mm -hmm. Because we don't want to run out. We don't want to way over order, but we don't want to run out. So how do you know how much to order? I came up with this pretty solid formula, 2.5 drinks per guest. Oh, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Which I know I've seen. There's the P word out there that's good for um, decoration ideas and everything. They have this (laughs) chart that's 17 drinks per guest. I'm like, what are you trying to do? Right, yeah. 17 drinks. And people all all the time, they'll buck back. They're like, no, 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 we need a lot more than that. Like, we're really going to drink. Yeah, I know you know your people, but no. You're thinking six hours of just unfettered drinking where they don't take into mind there's going to be photos, there's going to be toasts, there's going to be dinner. And at the end of the night, do you want to remember it or do you not want to remember it? Do you want to be sloshed? Exactly. You know, and you, as a bartender, you can't overserve people. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it's the same way with hours people try to book with us. We know how many hours you're probably going to need. So trust us because we do this for a living. Right. You're not going to need 17 drinks a person for the whole night. Right. You know, is so the average is about two, two and a half. 2.5, what I came up with because... You know, Aunt Betty's going to drink one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, not nine. everybody's going to drink. But Uncle Bob's probably going to have nine or ten. He'll wow. make up for... Right. He's lush, though. Yes. Uncle Bob's well, a you, lush. Then you have a few that aren't going to stick around past uh-huh. cake cutting. Mm-hmm. So you right. can factor those people out. But those counteract the fraternity brothers who are sticking around. So it does all kind of balance out, I think. And having you on the team helping factor in the actual number of drinks is so helpful. Because when I'm left to do that by myself, there have even been events that I unfortunately didn't get to have you on my team, but I was like, help me. I like, I need help. I think this number looks right, but what do you think about this? And Mike always comes to the rescue. He's like, uh, no, you need four more of this. And t- I mean, Look at and that. you're pretty accurate. You're pretty dead on too. I will say. No, I've got a, I've had a few challenges. Well, sure. We got close uh-huh. and yeah. we were in a dry County and yeah, well we that happens. Like, yeah. I need you guys. Here's my card. Mm-hmm. Find the closest <laughs> place. Yeah, or, or go to the neighbors and ask what they have on, in their fridge. Right. Mm-hmm. Get anything you can find. I know. So what happens if you were to run out of alcohol? Oh, people start getting mad. <laughs> yeah, they don't like it. <laughs> you do not want that to happen. No. Has that ever happened to you? I've had fraternity. Um, okay. Well, they were like, no, we, I'm telling you, we need 40 cases. I'm like, I'm telling you, you need 25 cases. That's, mm-hmm. that's all you need. No. They needed, they 40, needed cases. forty cases. Oh no! Yeah. Uh, was there a lot of puke at that wedding or that? It wasn't a party. It that was, party. It was a, a frat event. It was, it was mom's night, actually. Oh, of course it was. And oh. uh, yeah, mom yeah. doing keg stands. You know, we try really hard to discourage kegs. Yeah. Yes. Because of the logistic nightmare that kegs are, they have to be on site at least three hours to settle. They've got to uh-huh. be at the proper temp. If you don't know how to pump a keg, you're going to over pump it. You're going to get a lot of foam. Right. Oh, I've been in a lot of weddings like that. Mm-hmm. Or the pump doesn't work. And mm-hmm. they're like, what do we do? What do we do? I'm like, I don't Sorry. drink beer, so I have no, no idea. Yeah. So always bring a backup. Uh-huh. Try to stay consistent with the, I built a CO2 system. I got real heavy into homebrew for a while because I wanted to learn the process. I started, yeah. I started with mead, and I went to wine, and I went to beer, and then me and my buddy built a still out in the woods <laughs> and <laughs> learned how to make spirits. <laughs> <laughs> Of course you did. <laughs> of course you did. Coon Saloon. All right. That's right. I love that. So What's at a- least as a bartender, you made it all from scratch yourself. Mm-hmm. So you know a little bit more than the average person. And what is your favorite thing to make when you're at an event? Well, my favorite cocktail to make a bourbon drink is an old fashioned. Okay. I love making it. Because uh-huh. I found that I couldn't find a decent or consistent old fashioned going out. Now there's places all over, you know, like the vault. And uh-huh. Well, what's the key to a good centers. old-fashioned? Good ingredients, uh-huh. for sure. Um, purists will want a rye-based bourbon, but it really just needs to be a, a decent bourbon. Yeah. You can even use cheap bourbon, but um, I don't use sugar, granulated sugar. I use simple syrup because it's more readily soluble, uh-huh. especially in a cold solution. And then a good bitters, which... I didn't realize there's like 17 plus kinds of bitters. Oh, wow. They all have, taste different or just brands? No, all different flavors. Oh. There's black walnut. There's orange. There's uh, now there's che- um, chocolate. Wow. Hmm. I mean, the sky's the limit, really. Yeah, I would like the chocolate one, probably. Yeah, probably. I don't drink old fashions too much. I don't either. I'm not a bourbon drinker. But I hear I'm that the, the ice matters, too. Mm-hmm. If you have a bigger piece of ice, 
it dissolves less your, your and doesn't water is it down. Your dilution gonna affect your drink. Um, hmm. Again, a lot of purists, like for scotch, for uh -huh. instance, they'll want like one or two cubes, and they literally mean one or two cubes. Oh yeah, or hmm. maybe just a couple drops of water. Yep. Huh. Look at that. Seem like it would matter, but no. you'll have somebody come up and ask for a scotch and diet coke and i'm like yeah, i think you're really you're picturing scotch and soda what you've seen grandpa order mm -hmm. here you go <laughs> and they like it and they're great uh, yeah i mean mm -hmm. i learned a while back don't be pretentious about how you serve drinks it's that person's mm -hmm. relationship with that drink this yeah. is how maybe their favorite person that's gone now drank it or something oh like yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. what's your favorite thing to drink amanda i like a gin and tonic I'm kind of an old old lady like that. That but is like a, it's like boring. I, I take two limes. That's I not boring. Put more. The more sugar, the better in my drink. Yeah. And just dump sugar. Dump it in there. Dump a bunch of what's that red stuff? The red grenadine. Grenadine. Just so <laughs> much grenadine. I don't even care. No, I like a gin and tonic. I think it's just refreshing and light. And I don't know. I've literally, that's been my favorite drink forever. I'm giving up on the earring. <laughs> <laughs> I've had a, a, a lot of drinks that you've made, specialty drinks. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, what was that? Blue Electric or something that you made that one time? Uh, it was blue. Yeah, what was it? Electric that? Lemonade. Yeah, so good. Yeah. So good. Any drink with actual flavor that's not agreed, just... Agreed, agreed. I'm all down. How often do you get clients, you brides and grooms, wanting you to come up with a signature drink for their wedding? Um, Really high percentage. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times we'll take their favorite drink and we'll just add a little twist to it. Mm -hmm. Like maybe we'll do in your Moscow Mule, we'll, we'll add some rosemary infused simple syrup to it. Oh, that's that's interesting. Okay. I always love those weddings. And you do a lot of those yeah. weddings where they'll have a his and hers signature drink. I like that too. I just feel like it gives a little bit of their personality. Yeah. It's, it's just like a special touch. And I think it also, budget wise, it's a lot better on the on the budget than... Uh -huh an open bar all right. night. You know, if we can offer a handful of, of cocktails, you know, with I, I just think that, to me, it always seems to be a better budget-friendly option. Yeah. No matter what the budget is. But, you know, we've all had the weddings that, mm, unlimited bar, open all uh -huh. night, and... It can get it, expensive. Very expensive. Yeah. Very expensive. Well, so I'd I like to recommend speaking that. Speaking of that, so there are different types of bars. There's the open bar. There's the beer and wine bar. There's the cash bar. Tell us the differences between all of those and what you know your clients can expect. A beer and wine bar is a pretty safe bet. That's why a lot of, especially moms, are uh -huh. like, let's just offer them, let's, you know, I don't know, Uncle Bob again, you know. Yeah, <laughs> and you're less likely to get wasted right. on a beer and wine True. bar. You're going to mm -hmm. get full. Yeah, exactly, before you're going to probably get drunk, right? Mm -hmm. And um, if you are making cocktails and you let it run out during cocktail hour, that's fine. And I always tell them like, Hey, we can, we can let it go. You know, or yeah. some of them are like, no, I want the party to go all night. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So they do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's, yeah. It just depends really. So how many, uh, how many events do you as a company do around each year altogether? You know, it started with 20 or 30. And I think last year we, it was over 150. That's amazing. And how many of those clients, uh, percentage wise do cash bar beer and wine or open bar you'll find that you'll nearly never see us at a cash bar our company mm -hmm. because to get the license to sell it you have okay. to have a brick and mortar right mm -hmm. you know the metro areas and the town centers and places like that they have that already set up in house but they've also kind of gone in house with their service uh -huh. right I don't typically like a cash bar at a wedding anyway. I feel like those people are your guests. Mm -hmm. I don't know how many of you've seen, but like you're inviting them to come, but also you need to bring 20 bucks for the bar. And pay your own bill. Right. I, I try to discourage that when I can and say, let's just go beer and wine and we cut back the hours or, you know, let's, mm -hmm. let's limit what we're serving. And I feel like that's just a lot better way to include your guests. Well, personally. how about this? If you had a cash bar, but you, you gave away, or you had the, the beer and wine, mm -hmm. you get that. But if you want liquor, you have to pay for it. I think that's more appropriate. I, I definitely have venues that maybe 21C, for example, has a bar next door. So you have an event. I know this is not going to be a mic event, but, <laughs> but for right. example, like, you know, if we're offering beer and wine. This is what we're offering at the bar uh -huh. in here. If you don't like that, you can go buy your old fashioned in, right. in the bar. Yeah. And I think that's perfectly appropriate. And I think maybe, more, you know, at an event too, I think that's it's okay. But I just, yeah, I, oh, it's hard for me to be like, oh, yeah, bring your purse because. 
you're going to pay. And I've had people try to cut off the cash or cut off the open bar mm -hmm. at a certain time and switch to cash bar. And I'm like, that at that is point, a terrible then, idea. Yeah, you're going to upset cannot, some people. You're going to have very, you know, these drinks that people have been getting all night for free. Suddenly it costs eight dollars. That is the first best way to make your yeah. guests not happy. So I try the to discourage that very quickly. You know, I love, I, a lot of events, not weddings, but events give out tickets. You get two mm -hmm. tickets. Mm -hmm. Have you ever had a wedding do that? I've not. I've had a couple talk about it, but yeah. I've not had anybody. Have you? I've had somebody recently that was talking about it pretty heavily, and they even wanted to be able to sell more tickets. I'm like, I just, I can't you even can't allow touch that. It to mm -mm. be in the room. Mm -mm. You can't touch that. Yeah, I don't, and it, I, I, that, if you're having a classy wedding, I don't think. Uh, I agree. It, it takes some class away. Yeah. It definitely does. All right. Uh, do you show me your ticket? Show me your ticket. I'm going to have to take that ticket from you. Yeah, that doesn't work out. No, not so well. I agree with For that. For the most part, like carding people, uh -huh. it's not something that really is, um, it's not a problem normally. Yeah. If you look like you're a baby, it, I'm probably going to be like, let me see that. Let's mm -hmm, see it, right? Mm -hmm. But at a private event like that, it's not. You know, usually they police themselves. Uh huh. You're like, yeah. you know, Billy, you know, you're not supposed to be at the bar. Mm -hmm. Right. So, how do you guys deal with that as a wedding planner, as a bartender, where you you're obviously seeing that person's underage? We what communicate do do? a lot during mm -hmm. that. I mean, he's. I will say, I feel like I've got my eyes on everything happening. He especially does. But you're in one place. You're seeing the room kind of from a you know fisheye lens, watching what's happening. Uh -huh. I, we kind of communicate about it. I don't really know. I mean, we rarely, just like we talked about previously, uh, we don't cut people off per se, um, but they might be getting a lot different type of drink. They oh, might yeah. be getting a lot they lighter might be drink. A lot more mixer than they anything right, else. right, right, or only mixer. But because as far at that as point, somebody, they don't know. Right, but as far as somebody underage really trying to drink, at that point, I'm probably I'm going to go to the parent mm -hmm. and say but something. I, yeah, I'm going to be like, hey, I'm I'm sure you know this. But or maybe you don't, but your your child has been kind of sneaking drinks off the table and at least they know it's off my plate. And it's not on you. Right. 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 I mean, I, you know, I I can't allow that to happen and the bartender's not going to continue yeah. to allow that happening to happen either. So that's scary though. When you get into that kind of stuff, it's really frightening to think about what someone could do. Because we've all been that person who's mm -hmm. had too much to drink, whether we were underage or of age. Mm -hmm. We've all been that person. And, you know, the less experienced you are with it, the more dangerous it can be, obviously. So what about this? Have you had an experience with somebody that you knew drank too much and then you watched them walk out and get in their car? Have you ever had that experience? We've had people try mm -hmm. um, at the places where we've been where they have tried. Uh -huh. There's security present and they're like, no, that's not you're, take you're not getting in your mm -hmm. car. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's good. They put up a fight, but yeah, yeah I think they, somebody stops them. Mm -hmm. yeah. Let's get you an Uber. It's not a big deal. $10 ride. We'll get you back to the hotel. Like, there's Do you know what reason. hotel you're staying at? Yeah. What? Uh -huh. huh? <laughs> well, we're just going to see. Isn't it? Yeah. If they come up and they ask for a drink and they, keep slurring it like if you can't pronounce it you can't have it that's right 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 you don't even know what you were drinking what would you say couples need to know when they contact you have an idea what you want to serve okay definitely your guest menu your um don't be afraid to order what you like and have your guests drink it don't try to cater to every you don't need 20 different kinds beers of beers. that's really yeah. good advice mm -hmm. maybe pick a uh, one um Thicker beer, what is that called? Like a, lager. I usually a tell darker them, like a dark beer. Nail. I say an IPA. Usually get two to three. The, uh -huh. the fewer your selections, the faster your folks are going to make a decision and move along. Right. Instead of Very just true. standing there. Yeah. Nobody's reading the menu on the bar except for the person standing there. Right. Uh -huh. And they're probably not reading it. They're looking at me going, What do you have? And I'm like, uh -huh. It's. I know we do all this pretty signage at the bar and they don't ever Nobody read it. cares, it just right? It breaks my heart. I'm like, don't waste your money anymore. I'm, no. I love bar signage. It's one of my favorite things to do because I think it's so fun. And be, they get up to the bar and they're like, get that out of the way. What do you have? Well, it was right there in front of you, but cool. Yeah, there's a lot of things that we could do an episode yeah. on that do you really need it or mm -hmm. do you not? Yeah. yeah. Do you want to spend your money on it? And the main thing, a wedding planner. I'm like, I <gasps> yes. just don't get it's it. It's at the top of the I guest list. I don't get it. It's at the top <laughs> of the guest list. I'm also, just trying to zing you. <laughs> next episode is DJ versus band. Oh. oh. Just kidding. Just kidding. I'm sorry. Back to Mike. <laughs> um, yeah. So do you get a lot of people that email you and say, how much do you cost? Yes. They just want right to know, the like, gate. do you have a, a price sheet? And I'm like, oh, it's subjective. Right. Mm -hmm. Like, I need to know where I'm going. Uh -huh. um, logistically, am I bringing ice? Is there an ice machine? I never 
count on the ice machine working. Yeah. Or mm-hmm. having okay. enough for me and the caterer. Right. Uh-huh. So I just, that's why I have so many 150 quart coolers. I keep them bleached and I just bring fresh ice. So many questions that you have to have answered before you can give any right. mm-hmm. sort of How price. do we change the narrative on that though? Because we all, everyone in the industry deals with that. Yeah. How do we educate clients, potential clients to know you can't just say, what are your prices? Because, I mean, that's a constant battle. Mm-hmm. How do we how do we do that? Other than just saying it over and over oh, and yeah. over. We have to let somebody above us, like the knot and, and yeah. places like that, know that, like, hey, these guys don't have just a, a blanket sheet. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The caterer might, but really, no. Even that, yeah. And yeah. sometimes I, I see on DJ's websites, they do, and I get asked that a lot. Where are your prices? Mm-hmm. Well, like you said, it's all subjective. Yeah. It yeah. depends. Where are we going? How many hours do you need us? What right. do you need? All that kind of stuff. So if you're listening and you're getting married, don't just email the people you're looking to hire and say, yeah. how much do you cost? Say, hey, I want more here's information I, about yes, you. Right. This is our wedding date. This is where it's at. Even here's what I think we might be willing to spend on this. Well, there you I go. think we might be. You know, where, what is that, where does that land us? And then be prepared for a follow-up with a list of questions. Because that, that's what I'd always have. I, just, yeah. I call them qualifying questions. Yeah. Because yeah. You, that's how you could start narrowing it down to figure out what they really want. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. And how many more? What can you provide? Yeah. How many more years do you think you're going to do this? <laughs> Until I keel over. You, you're grooming your kids to <laughs> to take over the I, business? My daughter turns 21 July 1st, and she's already started working with us. Oh, wow. Over awesome. the last couple of years. We, we do it a lot. She does, you know, like busing and uh-huh. serving. and But now I'm teaching her how to make the drinks and how to be consistency is a big key for us. I, you should be able to go to any of the seven people that I have there and get the same drink. Mm-hmm. Well, so that brings me to this question. What's your training like? How do you train your your people? On the job. And okay. So I'll bring them on if they say, I don't have any experience. Perfect. We'll set you with beer and wine at first. Uh-huh. Let me show you the little cheater lines and the glasses because most of these glasses all have. I just marks learned on them. that. I just learned so that. Do you, know you brought what? three types of glasses. Tell us about these. I did. Um, this is. Our standard go-to, you can buy it at the big box club store. Okay, that's what this one? 265 for 11 bucks. Yeah. This one is one that you would order from a, one of those sites, a party store or whatever. Uh-huh. Um, they're pretty. They're a lot more expensive. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And if you get excited and you're talking to your friend, you got a glass of wine and you squeeze it. They're really easy. Oh, to they break? Yeah. Yes. yeah, these are a lot they're more flexible. They're very fragile. They go shoot well, this, something you at me. you just wad it up. Yeah. Yeah. I want to so break that one. I brought one. a big one and a little one. And okay. And then there's the customized ones. If you're going to order glasses, get one that's, uh, you know, it's really tough. And also, you can take it home and dishwash it. That's right. It's a collector, I've got, too. I've got some but, that have lasted a long time. But why? It's a fun memento. I don't know. Like, is it, okay, is I it have, worth it? I think it is. I think it's a fun touch. Although, if I were to make a choice between, you know, those three items, if I were to, like, I could only do one, I would probably go with the, the cheapest, the, the cheap cup, but get a cute napkin, a cute mm-hmm. cocktail okay. napkin. You know, that would be my choice because otherwise, if you're wanting to spend money on both of these, it just doesn't make sense. So I'd probably yeah. say here are the people cheaper. that do all three of these yeah. and the and koozies, all the things I know. I, some people, I'm over the koozies, koozies are polarizing. Like, some people are I'm like, I hate the them, I can't stand them, and some are like, no, I've got a koozie from every wedding I've ever had. Yeah, 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 yeah. no, thank I you, do too. And there's some. Morbid me sometimes wants to lay them all out and see which ones are still valid. <laughs> yeah. Aww. But I have some that go back 12 years. Yeah. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah, That's I'm just, I, this kind of stuff I don't get because yeah. I would throw it away. Yeah. And most people don't keep it. The only cool one I ever got at a wedding, I DJ'd a wedding at what's in Kansas City, the um, the the brewery in Kansas City. Mm. Boulevard? Boulevard. Mm-hmm. I DJ'd a wedding at the brewery. Uh-huh. They wow. have a, a wedding place there and they gave out glass oh, beer cool. mugs with their names on it and uh, some logo that's or cool. some and that was really neat that's pretty cool and if you can find a way to wash that off <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people then though, you got a sweet beer mug <laughs> i send home a sleeve of those with the client every time though mm-hmm. from the wedding with the client yeah i understand well, yeah. but guess no i think that no very few guests want to keep a plastic no. cup it's just a, it, it but it does feel a little more upscale when you're the you know, only you're ones i've ever kept from a wedding and i had i still have one uh-huh. left it was a regular plastic cup, like a regular plastic. Like a solo cup? No, 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 no. Oh, like a like a stadium cup. Yes. Yeah. And it was it was just a little bit bigger than this. And when you put the drink into it, it changed color. Mm-hmm. Those are cool. And I like that. So I got one for my daughter, 
and brought it home, high. and that's the one she uses all the time. Of course. Because it's a bunch of different colors. Those are fun. Paper color shirt in the 80s. Yes. That's I right. did have one of those. <laughs> I had a few of those. Yes. But I spending the extra money on things like this. Yeah. Not important. It's yeah. Spend the money on your DJ, your photographer. And if you have leftover, then you can buy this. Agreed. In my I opinion. I don't disagree with that. I don't disagree with that. Or if you want to buy this, spend the money on this and then don't get a wedding planner. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. Over you. you must I'm have so a wedding over plan. You. you must have one. Over you. No, okay. Solo cups, though, for real. I just realized, like, this week that there's lines all along the cup that tells you how much is in there. I had no I idea. I didn't know that. No. Mm-hmm. Like, I thought the like, lines were just there. No. No. For they're holding. Actually, they're Wait, actually for, like, one. The, yeah. Like, kind of an invisible that. line yeah. right there. So that I one? a big energy drink for it. Yeah. But uh, that's your wine line. I had no idea This one right here? No, no. Further down. About where the leaf is. About halfway. Look. There's, like, a little lip right there do you see that i do now isn't that crazy but you can't feel it no mm-hmm. but that's no, they really. know where to pour though mm-hmm. i didn't know that i know isn't that yeah, fascinating that's, that's the wine line and actually line. That, that first line at the bottom uh-huh. that one a, doesn't have shot line ounce line yeah isn't that now, fascinating that's what? not one that gets used very often because we have a pretty firm no shots policy mm-hmm. shot 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 shots everybody because going back to our fraternity and sorority mm-hmm. brothers and sisters they yeah. want to do like 15 in a row mm-hmm. oh lord help us for one it's thing they're wasting because the, they want a fresh cup each time yeah i'm like you're drinking the same shot can yeah, i just no you're just gonna throw them away right in front of me yes be yes. sustained they're, they're, they're running the uh, the earth i know they're running the though. earth is that cool i'll find the i'll find the image of the um we can put that up on on our website what's the beer line uh oh, you don't drink beer out of these do I don't drink beer, so I don't know. You do a larger cup than that. Yeah, a larger okay. one. But that, usually that's the, the 10 or 12 ounce line, or a 12 or 16 ounce yeah. line. You would do, this is like, that's more. And they sell the, size. the big solo cup size. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. okay. those red cups just, they, they just scream. strike a nerve with yeah. me. They do, they do me too. <laughs> they do me too. But I'm fascinated by that. So I'll find the image though that's got like the lines on it. I had no idea. So what are your drinks of the summer for this year? 2020, what are the drinks of the summer? Yeah. Do you have anything <laughs> called the Corona? No. <laughs> Do you see Corona being a popular drink for the next decade? Probably no. not. I still get asked like to mix some in because they're having taco bar. Yeah, sure. oh, yeah. It's you know they want to definitely good they want for a Mexican that. beer. Uh-huh. And corona is less expensive than like your Pacifico and your Modelo, mm-hmm. which I love Modelo because of that hint of vanilla to it. Hmm. Oh, I see. I wouldn't know. I'm not a beer drinker. When, it, I've all... tasted a bunch of beers before, and they're like, "What does it taste like?" And beer. I say, "It tastes like beer and they the hops." All, and they all taste the same to me. And it's I know supposed to have a hint of chocolate. Nope. I taste hops. That's what I, I taste. I taste that. Yeah, that's me too. Ugh, I'm not a beer yeah. drinker. Maybe we need to learn. Some, I don't know. Maybe we should have tried some beer tasting. <laughs> I, that's <laughs> field really, trip. When I started brewing, it was just to figure out the flavor profiles. Yeah. And, you know, yeah, I don't get it. I, I don't literally on my radio show we had a brewmaster from Germany oh my come gosh. in, taste a whole bunch of beers. He's like, "Oh, this one is this." And I'm like, Ugh. "That tastes like beer." I'm like, I do not like it. <laughs> it is not good at all. I know. Like, oh, this one sounds really good. Nope, not good. Nope, no. over that. Mm-hmm. I agree. <laughs> so, summer <laughs> drinks. What's yeah. what's the top summer drinks this summer? So we got the mojito. Okay, a standby. Um, I'm still working on here. Which is. Probably the club soda sitting on top, so it's all water. It is. I know. Um, cucumber cooler is really popular. Ooh, yeah. It's a very refreshing drink that can either be gin or vodka. Mm-hmm. Okay. People tend to gravitate to vodka because it's so versatile. Mm-hmm. Like, it just vanishes into anything. True, and you can't smell it on your breath. Oh, you can. <laughs> oh, you can? Alcohol's alcohol. <laughs> um, that's not what I heard in the movies. Lies. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what else do we have? Um... Cucumber cooler, mojito. Do you ever do like a uh, like a margarita, like the the mix, like the frozen type drinks? Yes. In fact, I get asked for uh, margaritas pretty often. Um, I w- like to say that, and I say um a lot, so I'm sorry. It's okay. Uh, I'll cut it right out. <laughs> <laughs> so Miss Anna and I kind of have joint custody of a margarita machine. Oh, okay. She's like, I just really, you know, I do rentals and stuff. Right. Uh-huh. So I'll break it out, but that's another one of my questions. Like, how many guests do you have? Because mm-hmm. this yeah. thing holds like seven gallons. Yeah. Oh, 50. Like, let's just make margaritas on the rocks. Right. Or 
three hundred. Like, let's think margaritas on the rocks. This machine can't keep up with you. No. Mm -hmm. What's the perfect range? Because you know, Sassafras has their wineritas, which are right. amazing. They're so good. But people love them so much they run out fast, mm -hmm. and making a new batch takes, takes too forever. Yeah. That's why you've got to have one going and and one dispensing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that it's, it's always being kept at temp. And it's another one of those things, kind of like a keg. It's got to be on site three or four hours because it's got to get to it's town. Be prepped and ready. Uh -huh. uh, I tried to use fruit juice based instead of doing like your Cuervo margarita mix. Yeah. Uh -huh. Because yeah, yeah. it's got so much preservative and stuff in it. It gives me heartburn. That's why I switched to juices and things and started huh. making, trying to go natural to healthy, keto, uh -huh. paleo friendly. I get a lot of requests for that. Interesting. So we'll do like a mixture of pineapple, orange, lime juice, and tequila, which comes out really delicious. Frozen Sounds orange. Sounds really rocks. good. Yeah. yeah. A lot healthier. You, it's funny that you say that. I, I read a, a fun fact the other day that Mars Company doesn't promote people frying their candy bars because it doesn't fall in line with their health initiative. <laughs> like, um, what? Um, what? That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> like that is an oxymoron like, if like, ever I've what? heard one. What? You, you know Mars Bar is basically a granola bar. Yeah. Like, yeah, right. <laughs> so healthy for you. The Mars Bar has uh, one gram of protein. One gram of protein. 1,800 basically, calories. It's basically uh, a workout bar. It's basically a workout like, bar. Uh, that is fascinating. It didn't make any sense. So wow. margarine machines, what about fall and winter weddings? What are the typical drinks for that, that period? We try to go into more harvest kind of colors. That's where we'll bring out stuff like your uh, Washington apple mm -hmm. is... Oh, those are delish. Yeah, and mm -hmm. it's just crown apple and uh -huh. cranberry juice. That's mm -hmm. see? It's Your simple. Favorite. Why did I not bring that today? Next week. Next week. Next week. Next week. <laughs> I love crown that. I literally bought a thing of crown apple a couple weeks ago for an event I went to, uh -huh. a buddy's birthday. Nobody drank it, so I took it home with me. Well, that, I don't think anybody noticed. That is not a very good gift giver. I well, I brought two different <laughs> ones. I brought Okay, fair enough. I brought him a one a and gift, I brought this for myself. <laughs> mm-hmm. And was then, this the peanut butter party? Yeah. Okay. And I took it back. It was oh, so good. I have yet to open it, but well, I have, you have it. it. You I know ha it's in there. case I want to drink it. I there got you it. Go. I love and you, that. Well, you can mix the crown um, salted caramel with the crown apple, and then you've got a caramel apple. Oh my gosh, guy! That sounds okay. You make me thirsty. <laughs> and all I got here is a mojito. So oh, it's just terrible. And you know, a lot mojito. of times we'll take a your shot and just scale it up, add a little yeah. soda to it. Okay. Put a little flare on there. And you got a cocktail instead of a shot. It's a good idea. Oh. I like that. What's your favorite shot, Amanda? I, mm, 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 You're yeah. a Jägermeister girl. I know <laughs> yeah, it. Nope. Look at her. When I look those. at Amanda, I think she's ordering tons of Jägermeisters. Uh, uh, I can't tell you the last time I ordered a shot. Oh, yes, I can. Uh, <laughs> yes, I can. I don't know that I order shots. I'll have them given to me, okay, but I'm yeah, not I have them ordering them. Everybody thinks that, oh, wedding planner, you got to take a shot with this. And I'm like, you really? Okay. No. And I throw it over my shoulder. I'm like, ooh, thanks. Or I'll give Mike, give me, give me a vodka shot, which is water. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Thanks. Ooh, that burns. But no, I, um, yeah, New Year's Eve a couple of years ago, we had some, oh, it was like a, kind of had like a coffee flavor to it. Buttery nipple. It no. No, those are no, really good. No. Uh, what was it? Oh gosh, it was something with like, I don't remember, but it was. It was delish. It was delish. Lemon drops next, are good. Yeah, they're wonderful. But lemon the next drops. Day I love no making lemon drop cocktails. Yes, those yes, are wonderful. Yes, those are delicious. Are you do a great job at that. That's a great summertime drink. Oh, yeah, that's a good man. idea. Why? Where is all this? Where's I the know. bar? That's why I, I texted Amanda earlier and I was like, she's like, you want me to get a bag of ice? I'm like, just a small one. I'm making one cocktail. We don't, yeah. one cocktail. We don't need to get nuts. Huh? Oh, but we should get nuts. We should. We're going to once this industry. Oh, <laughs> that's a life. All right, so one give us two pieces of advice. One piece of advice for other vendors that you may work with that's something that you think they should know about what you do, and then one for potential clients. Yeah. I one of them's going back to glassware. It's a big thing with me, actual glassware. Mm -hmm. Some especially the moms, they uh -huh. want to keep it classy all night. Once the dance floor opens up, I want to see us transition to these disposables, compostables. Mm-hmm. For the biggest reason, well, you've got your catering and your staff there, they can help clear the room and bus it. Yeah. Right. And then we've got less potential for breakage. Somebody yep. drops a glass and it breaks on there the dance go. floor. And now we got to stop. Nothing clears the dance floor faster. Yep. Yeah. Oh, party, foul, party foul. Party foul. One bride banned red wine at her wedding because she'd heard so many horror stories about that. Huh. 
dress getting so stained yeah. on the dance floor. True. Like, well, then keep your lush friends off the dance yeah, floor. Yeah. But everything, by the time it gets to the, I mean, it's, no matter how clean it is, it's still dirty. It's dirty That's why right. a lot of brides have that second dress. Yeah. yeah it's true. Yeah. It's true. All right. So what would you tell potential clients? Touching on, well, that there's ordering your, your cups and your glassware, um, your vendors. I always ask them who they're, caterer is uh -huh. their dj is because mm -hmm. i know almost everybody and how they operate mm -hmm. right then i know like with you i know i don't have to bring anything because you're like me you're just pretty much self mm -hmm. self-contained yeah. right but i know that some other people will try to lean on your good graces if they can right mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. i've had uh coordinators ask me to do stuff that's other um other duties as assigned mm -hmm. yeah it's yes. not it's not Particularly, and I hate saying not your wheelhouse, not my job. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We I'll all do. help do anything. If I if I'm set up, I'm like, hey, can I light candles? Because I'm bored. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Well, Mike, we it, love you. Yeah, you're the best. You're so much fun to work with. You're so easy to work with. And in this industry, that's Absolutely. that's a big thing. And you bring us alcohol. Yeah, right. you make everybody happy because you bring us alcohol. <laughs> well, no, we, we do love working together with you. as a team. We are all a team. Right. That's true. So let's get into wedding opinions real quick. Ooh, let's ask him like two or three questions. Okay, let's think. Um, First one, bouquet and garter toss. Go. Yes or no? I always found that the pulling the garter off in front of the crowd was a little... It's weird. It's odd. Yeah. It's weird. It's awkward. Okay. Let it go. Yes. No. And bouquet? Bouquet. Make sure that she's not drunk when she goes to toss the bouquet because it may end up going through the ceiling that's man. true okay. stuck that does happen somebody's beautiful chandelier and you know yeah. what even if they do do the bouquet a lot of times people are fighting over it. by the end there's hardly any flowers yeah there's no petals left it on doesn't the like okay. uh Agreed. so get rid of that okay uh what is your favorite getaway that you've seen exit from exit like a couple getaway yeah the helicopter yeah it's pretty uh, cool yes. helicopters it. are fun unless it's windy uh-huh terrifying one almost didn't make it Ooh. was that the one that jason Springs. was at yes yep. he's like dude the, the couple almost ran into <gasps> the wires it was maybe the guide wire for the telephone pole it, yes it almost ran oh it almost got blown into it my it, gosh it's a really super and it would have probably yeah. killed a lot of people because oh it was so gosh. close to everything oh my gosh that's horrible. <laughs> he's like it was intense but it when it works it's beautiful oh my just gosh, make sure scary. it's not too windy and you have plenty of room yeah yeah <gasps> all right um and our last one one. You don't have one? I don't have one. What's a good one? What's a good one to ask him? Is that thunder? And our last one, Amanda. Okay, let's hear What's it. What's your favorite song to hear at a wedding? Oh, good call. You know, normally it's um, the most popular karaoke song in the entire world from Journey. Don't, don't stop, stop believing. believing. <laughs> yes. Traditionally, I always got paid at the end of the wedding. And uh -huh. since change that because for one thing it's crass to go up and tap them on the shoulder like, um, i know this is I, your beautiful moment you're yeah. about to leave in that <clears throat> show me the money car. yeah <laughs> can i get a check yeah that's the same thing here you have to pay the day before totally so you don't have to worry about yeah. that yeah. yeah so don't stop leaving and that is always a good one to end with because everybody will sing it, it is it's a feel good song they're so happy it. they're so yeah, yeah. That's don't a good do one. a fake send off don't do a fake Agreed. send off Agreed. amen Agreed. most of your crowd yeah if Yep. If they were feeling anxious or wanting to leave, they that's used their, the that's their cue. Like, that that Let's get out of here. Well, Mike, that's thank it. you so much for joining us. Yeah. This is so much fun. Absolutely. So Great. much fun. So Amanda, much. any last words from you as always? Never. <laughs> no, well, let's do a toast. Cheers. To everybody, Cheers. to all weddings. To all and weddings. To everybody gets back to work. I do IQ. New. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks so much for listening and make sure to subscribe and expect a new exciting episode each and every week. Please follow us on social as well at I Do IQ Podcast. If you have a guest recommendation or a topic you would like to hear discussed on the podcast, please let us know. The I Do IQ Podcast is recorded at the most amazing studio in Northwest Arkansas and by the most amazing and best looking people in all the world, Go Rogue X. You can follow them on social as well at Go Rogue X or visit them on Line at GoRogueX.com. They truly are amazing, and if you're looking to start a podcast, they are your go-to people. Also, a big shout-out to our creative people, David Kinney from Forward all the way from the great state of Michigan. You can check his website out, TheForwardCreative.com, for all your logo and design needs. And for more information on Brock and Amanda, please visit DJBrockEntertainment.com and AmandaReadWeddings.com. Thank you again, and we'll see you on the next episode.